the things just have to materialize and happen. And uh, this is a great place for us. Pocono is a track we've won races at. We always run well here. We didn't qualify very good, but I think we got a car. If we can take it and get it up in the front, I think we can uh, really show something. Now, you've been on both sides of the coin, both winning and losing. Which is more infectious? <laughs> Come on, man. I, the only reason I'm here is to win. Uh, I, I, I don't like anything else that we do here other than winning. Uh, that, that's what it's all about. Uh, that's what we, we, we do, you know. That's, that's why we love what we do is to come out here and, and compete against the best and, and to feel what it's like to get to Victor Lane is, is what keeps you going each and every weekend. And when you don't get there, it just makes you appreciate it more and more and more, and it makes you work harder to get back there, and that's what we're doing right now. So winning is more infectious, but first off, we're looking back at the video. There's rumors that the officials may penalize your crew chief for passing. Oh, I think they should have penalized him for a lot of things. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing that he's a crew chief. That's all I got to say. But you know what's funny is he, he, he never is pushing me to go out and do all these things that he was doing when he was behind the wheel. I mean, he was doing some things that were just a wild man. out of control. Absolutely. I, I was shaking my head. I couldn't believe some of the, I mean, they'd say, give the one to go and he'd start passing cars. You know, they'd say pass on the left, he'd pass on the right. Or they'd say pass on the right, he'd pass on the left. I mean, he did everything opposite of what everybody was telling him to do. But uh, I'm just glad he knows how to make the right calls from up on top of that box. Well, we've heard enough of the talk of the talk about the go-kart race. We'll find out the true results next Sunday in our Discover Countdown to Green. We'll see all the video, and the video will tell the whole story. Marty? Well, Matt, I think Terry Labonte would have taken all of them in the go-kart race. How about that? Because he's a two-time Winston Cup champion. Yeah, one as many as Jeff. That's okay. I'm I'm going to protest. We're, we're sitting down for this interview because, you know, us pit reporters have to walk around, go get all these interviews. Us booth guys sitting up there in the AC, sitting down, hanging out. That's not fair, is it? It doesn't look like it is. You looked like you were wore out walking Thank up. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> How about your race car? You guys have really turned it around lately, Terry. Yeah, I tell you what, we've got a good car here. We're running good. Uh, we broke an air wrench on our pit stop there, so we lost a lot of spots, but uh, I think we got a pretty good car. So Kellogg's team's doing a good job, and we'll. Uh, Try to fight back and have a good run today. Three top 15s in the last four races. Is that consistency I see there? It is, but we're, we're not where we want to be. We're kind of knocking on the top 10 door, and we, we really need to be up in the top 10. And uh, last week, we probably could have had a top 15, and I kind of went to sleep. They had a wreck late in the race, and uh, I checked up because I thought they were I thought it was going to be a bigger wreck yeah, than it really was. It wasn't as big as you thought it was. And I lost about six or seven spots there, and I never got them back. But uh, we've been doing pretty good, though. Let's talk about your week after Chicago. You left uh, Sunday night after Chicago, went to your place in Texas, and uh, there was a problem there. What happened? Well, let's make a long story short. We kind of, Texas, is, uh, parts of it have been experiencing some flash flooding, and the, a river been out of the bank, more than one of them. We've had a lot of rain down there. And we got there, and, and my property backs up to a river. And so uh, I knew where it was because the guy next door told me. And so we, we felt like we'd be fine getting in. And as we got there, it started raining, and it rained uh, uh, probably, gosh, I don't know, 10 or 12 inches, I guess. And we kind of got caught in a flash flood. And uh, the truck, uh, the, we got the truck stuck in the mud, and the water was up above the radio speakers and the doors. And uh, we finally were, we were stuck there for a couple of days before we got out. And we finally finally got out but it was uh we'd get up every about every hour and look and see how close the river was to the house and i think that's when it dawned on me that i don't have flood insurance <laughs> not good not good and i probably built my house a little too close to the river so uh it was kind of really scary though and uh, uh it kind of it made you realize what those uh, folks are going through down there funny now but uh, wasn't funny at the time and you know what i think i think it all flowed down from wally's house to I, your house hey, marty, don't you agree with that that's the direction it was coming from <laughs> marty yeah. Marty, yes. tell him I sent uh, a note in a bottle, and I threw it well, out, but I don't Wally know if he got he, it or not. Well, he said he sent a note in a bottle, and you didn't get it, did you? You were supposed to grab it. <laughs> well, believe it or not, the current was a little bit stronger than I thought. I saw it go by, and I couldn't catch okay. it. <laughs> All right. They had to take a 24-mile 24, 24 ride in, in four-wheelers to get back to his truck, which was, you know, 100 yards from the house. They had a really tough week. Got there on Sunday night. Couldn't get home until Tuesday night, Bill. Okay, Marty, we're right next door hanging out with uh, Kyle Petty. First of all, uh, let's talk about your car here. How is it? <laughs> We've struggled this week. I think John's been really good, and and, um, and Jerry's been really good, the Georgia Pacific car and the Cheerios car, but we struggled with the Sprint car a little bit, and we're still struggling. We were in here uh, running some numbers through a computer, trying to figure out what kind of rubbers we could put in and what kind of shock adjustments and wedge and stuff. So uh, we're going to try a different setup when we go back here in a minute. 
I know you had an unfortunate end to your race last week, but your car looked good early in that race, Kyle. It, it was decent. We've, we've kind of struggled the last four or five races. Uh, we haven't been as good as what we wanted to be. We, we went through a stretch early in the year where, where the sprint dodge was really good. We were good week in and week out, and we felt like we were making ground. We've just kind of maintained, and uh, when, you, when you start to climb and then you only maintain, you feel like you're sliding backwards almost. But I think uh, the last three or four weeks, Stephen Lane and Hyder and everybody's worked really hard, and we're, we're getting there little by little. Okay, um, I know you have a race to run midweek at Schrader's place. <laughs> Schrader just invites people out there so he can beat us up. I, th I think that's what it is in this 10 lap. I heard him say 10 lap, you know, kind of show race, whatever. So when he laps us four times in 10 laps, it's, you know, then he's the hero. But, you know, Kenny's uh, done a phenomenal job. He's always been a part of anything that we've done. Uh, with the charity ride, when we announced Patty and I that we were we were looking at doing the Victory Junction Game Camp, Kenny was one of the first people to sign up and uh, to go to Peely. You know, he's asked me a couple times. I hadn't had an opportunity, but to go out there uh, on a night like this and to have Steve Park, uh, and I hope Steve's doing better. You know, I was praying for him when I saw that happen, but hope Steve. Uh, and, and you look at Steve and, and Dale Jr. and some of the guys that are going to be out there and to come out there to his place and race and have him be a part of the Victory Junction King Camp, I think means a lot to our family, so it's important. Autographs and everything. Sounds like a great time. It's going to be a big time, and, and on top of that, Kenny said he'd buy dinner. That's the most exciting part. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Kyle. Best of luck here. Thank you, man. All right. That's Kyle Petty. They continue to work on the racetrack here, trying to get it dry. The sun is out. It's a nice afternoon in Pocono. We want to go race it. We'll be right back. TNT is at Pocono Raceway in Long Pond, Pennsylvania for the Pennsylvania 500 presented by Pep Boys. And the news continues to get better. The skies are bright. The sun is out. The track is drying more and more. You can see the different shades of pavement. But what does the radar look like, Alan? Well, question asked, question answered, Dave. Well, first of all, finally my friends have come through and they've passed <laughs> me along some ice here. And, uh, you know, we've, I think we've seen enough yellow today. I think we've seen enough red today. I've been working on the green one. Oh, but very good. Thank you very much. Now, uh, the green up here, however, has been a little bit better, too. See all this green? I just got the monitor all wet. All green. It's all gone. International Raceway up Pocono. Pocono Raceway right there. And then beyond it, a nice little window there. So as the track drying continues, I think we're going to be okay for some green flag racing. Alan? We hope so. That's good news. That is great news. Thank you, Dave. Back to the popsicle. Yeah. <laughs> Still hasn't sent us up any of any though. Matt Yoakum, how about your turn? Well, Alan, on Wednesday, it will tragically mark the one-year anniversary of the death of Corey Stringer, the Minnesota Vikings football player who died of heat stroke. Now, many times we give you the track temperature, and down here on Pit Road, when we say it's 134 degrees, that's what a lot of the crew members are standing on for three, four, even five hours. And Al Schufer has been 25 years in the sports medicine industry. You've been working on this, Al, over at Chip Ganassi Racing, how to take care of, of your athletes, your over-the-wall guys. Yeah, we... We have a different philosophy at Chip Ganassi Racing where we're concerned with the person and how to get the most out of our person, whether it's our drivers, our crew members, our hauler drivers, everybody that's involved with our whole team concept. And what I've got here is I've got uh, a digital sling psychrometer. And what it measures is the temperature and humidity of the air, the actual air temperature. And we can take a factor of 150 is the number that I've set for our group that I kind of monitor. And if it's over 150, I make sure they get extra fluids and get the right amount of fluids in their body. Now, how do you prepare your guys when you know it's going to be a record-breaking day? Well, it's, that's kind of a long process, man. We start actually on Wednesday, the week of a race, and I monitor the temperature at the, actually at our shop in practice uh, when we try to do some heat conditioning work. And then also I monitor the site that we're going to and look at the trends in the past, uh, temperatures that they've been in the past, and what they're going to be, the projected forecast. Now you can see folks at home that NASCAR culturally has hit the mainstream with MTV and Dale Earnhardt Jr. and a number of other drivers. But, but this, oh, by the way, one quick question for you. You know, the BP Challenge. Last year, the 12 guys were trying to win that money. What about your guys? They've been fast, and I've seen the averages. Each race, they start to get faster and faster and faster. Well, you could tell Benny, he might as well get ready to write the check. Actually, we won't cash. We won't take the check from him. We want straight cash, and oh, I'll be the one to collect on. it from him. Just as quick as we get that, that first pit stop that's, what, 12-9, 13 something? It's like. got to be 12. under... 99. 12 99 under 13 seconds. Tell him I'm coming to get the money in a few minutes. So just tell him to get ready. Okay, I got it, Al. Well, Benny, you better get that money ready because Al Schufert says both the 40 and 41 guys are going to take your money. Good. Marty. Well, Matt, as you know, after happy hour yesterday, you know, we got to kind of hang out. It was a beautiful day here in Pocono. It wasn't raining like it was earlier today, so I decided to go out with my buddy, Rusty Wallace. We played a little golf, and believe me, Rusty's swing is even a little worse than Wally's. 
Every Saturday, two hours after happy hour practice, I'm right here on the golf course. Today, I got my buddy Marty Snyder. We're going to attempt to play a little golf, NASCAR golf. Look at that, see? Good hit, I'm man. out there That's with good. you. Oh! Oh, you, you lucky sucker. <laughs> hit the tree right out of the middle of the fairway. Come on. You're That's... playing illegal already. Oh, come on You're cheating, now. man. You're cheating. That is just beautiful. like that. Just wow. like that. Yeah. You are getting good at this game, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, why has this become your passion all of a sudden? Well, you know what? Practice is over at noon. Yeah. I don't have anything to do from noon on except autograph sessions and stuff like that. And man, I gotta tell you, I'm just getting tired of doing the same little thing at the track. And yeah. Uh, I'm in the beach. You're on the, the beach. Clothes on today. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really cool guy come up. We're talking. And I told him how I wanted to try this one because it's two inches short of my, my other one. Maybe a little more control. He says, you like that? And he said, yeah, here you go. You can have it. Just gave me a $500 really? golf club. Yeah. You have become hey, a... The only thing he said, if you don't like it, autograph it so I can get it. Auction for charity. I said, okay. If I don't take anything on the road, oh, you sucker's trying yeah, to be yeah. nice. We gotta go. <laughs> and the other thing about golf is you can't let people pass you. I'm trying to pass him. I hate these electric golf carts. They don't have any torque. No. No power, man. There's not many people that can drive race cars successfully, you know. Yeah. There's 43 of us out there. But the humiliating thing for me is when I come to the golf course, <laughs> everybody can play better than I yeah. can play. Yeah. And you like that? It doesn't bother doesn't me. Bother? Everybody's always trying to help me. Yeah. And they're all kind. <laughs> and I can hit the worst shot in the world and they go, hey, great shot, you know? <laughs> oh, that is terrible. Look at that. Well, hey. No worse than this one. I think it was a great shot. See how everybody in the golf course commends everybody? Even when you suck? I think it might pass That's more right of a solid bump right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, one, that's, that's one thing I like about playing golf. Yeah, a little racing involved. Get them on the huh? outside? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Run me off with a wrong hitch. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a good hit. Oh, oh golly. <laughs> there it is. Turn in. Oh, Very boy. nice. You can use that. From off the green. We can use that You can shot. use that. <laughs> well, Rusty, well, Rusty and I enjoyed playing golf together, and uh, we, we played that just so you could see it again, but uh, golf's really become your passion, and how did you look out there? How was your swing, Rusty? I thought my swing looked okay, to tell you the truth. Uh, <laughs> it's not as bad as Wiley's. I was just giving you a little great. Well, yours was pretty good, too. We had a great day. I had a, we sunk a couple 20-foot putts. We had some good drives. That was fun. And... Uh, I wish I was having that much fun today, but I'm not. But uh, yesterday was a lot of fun. I really enjoy golf, get a lot of meet and meet a lot of new people, and that's it. I'm having fun with it. So what was the final tally? I got to know that. No, I think <laughs> we're like, only talking about like 48 and and in, good, in, in uh, nine holes, something like that. You know. That's good for you though. Yeah, for me it is, and I'll get better and better and better and uh, stay working. I golf every Saturday, have a good time at it, and uh, do a little bit at home. And um, I got a lot to learn, but I'm having a good time with it. All right, and don't let don't play golf with Wally. It's it's no fun. Yeah, I think I should play golf. I'll rough them up a little bit. We think. Yeah, well, I think that'd, that'd be a good idea. Well, Go ahead, I, Wally. Well, I'm just surprised. Oh. No, everybody stopped helping me, so maybe oh, I yeah. could play with no one Rusty wants to and help Rusty you play will golf. help me. Yeah, and everybody helps Rusty. That should tell you something, Wally. <laughs> well, see, I can't hear what they're saying. Yeah, I know. That's, uh, that's a good thing, yeah. Right? It's, a, it's a good thing I don't hear yeah. what they're saying, right? It's a good thing because, well, you know, Wally. Hey, man, I can hold my own out there. We're having fun. If, if, if he beats me on the golf course, I wreck him with the golf course. That will never happen. It'll never happen. I'll beat you on the golf course. But I may take you up on the race on the golf course. Yeah, you may take you up on the race race on the golf course and that's what he taught me two things you know keep your drive straight you know and don't let anyone pass you in a golf cart right yeah they were trying they didn't succeed though did they no they did not and i was hey, glad he was what? my driver you did a good pretty good job uh driving off that tee you look good right there but with those snakes yeah. <laughs> you walk right out there with those snakes you're nuts man uh, well I, I told wally i'm used to finding his ball out there in the grass yeah, with a snake i don't think you saw that sign that was on that uh, when you walked you didn't see the snake sign but i appreciate you throwing the ball at me though well, i was trying to wake you up Thanks a lot. You're and next time when, it, when, when there's a rain day, let's play delay. Let's play in the uh, motorhome lot. That's more fun. Yeah, I've practiced that last year at Michigan. I yeah. hit well three shots.